Let's be real. Coding isn't all fun and games. You get frustrated because you forgot a semicolon on line 154 of your code, a bug which you wasted three hours of your time looking for. Sometimes your code works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it works perfectly, and as soon as you add one other line of code, you break everything. We get it. Coding can be quite challenging, but it's really not supposed to feel that way. And I'm gonna be tackling the problem in two ways in this video. The first one being more philosophical and mindset related. Meanwhile, the second one is a bit more practical, but I would recommend watching both since they complete each other. You see, when you were playing football with your friends in your younger years, did it feel like a struggle to go outside and get pretty tired from running around? Probably not. But why is that? Well, you could tell me that that's because it was literally a game. But I'll tell you that there's more to it than that. Now imagine going to that same game, but there's one thing different. Your goal is to score four goals. You don't care about fun. You don't care about passion. No messing around. You gotta score at least four goals. So you go to the ball and attack. Someone tackles you and takes the ball. You get mad and frustrated. It happens again and again, and at the seventh attempt, you end up scoring the goal. Now you gotta endure the same thing three more times. You feel unmotivated, annoyed. You just wanna get done with it. But here's the thing. You could have done the exact same thing, but with a different mindset. The mindset that you were coming to the game to play with your friends and have fun. And you would have had multiple laughs with them. And probably scored more than one goal during that same time period, since the body works better when fed with dopamine. Now how does that relate with coding? Review your learning goals with me. It will probably look something like this. Learn variables. Learn loops. Go delete code and do two problems today. Now this could sound like some good goal, but it's the exact same thing of going to a football match and having the goal of scoring four goals. You will feel miserable with these types of goals. The tracking of your goals would be easier. There's no denying that. But does that justify having higher chances of giving up and getting burned out? Probably not. Now let's take the football analogy and apply it to coding. We said that the goal shouldn't be to go and score four goals, but to go and play with your friends. Applying it to your coding can seem a bit tricky at first, but it's really simple actually. Instead of your goal being to learn loops, your goal should be to code for an hour and have fun with it. You're learning, not working. Remember that. Having a goal of learning Rust could be replaced with making a calculator UI in a weekend with Rust. It gives you the freedom needed to grow and flourish in your learning. Now let's stop talking about football and talk a bit about basketball. When you're having fun, there's no need for motivation. Productivity and discipline take care of themselves. Remember the times you played and actually loved the session? Did you feel tired after running for 30 minutes? Did you have to motivate yourself to push through in the middle of the game? Probably not. And that's because you were playing a game. And it's exactly what the book Actionable Gamification tackles. As the author, Yu Kai Cho, explores the concept of actionable gamification and provides the practical strategies for implementing gamification in various contexts. But I'm not going to waste your time with these strategies, but I'll directly tell you how to apply them in your coding life. Now in this part of the video, I usually ask you to interact with the video in any way, but today I'll specifically ask you to comment your thoughts on the video and how you will apply gamification in your daily life. Honestly, just comment anything, as long as it's readable. Now back to the subject. In his book, Yukai Cho says that people are motivated by a sense of progress and achievement. Now, how do we maximize that for coding? Let's say you want to build a website. The task is literally just to build a website, but here's how you can make it more fun. Divide the task into many shorter subtasks that'll give you a sense of progress faster. Every task shouldn't take more than an hour. Just as in video games, you have to go from level one to level 60 and not from level zero to level one. Apply that to your coding journey and you'll find it a lot easier to actually get yourself to do the work. Now let's jump into Minecraft. You're starting your computer in the morning just to see that your friends have built a big castle while you were asleep. What do you do? You either blow it up and blame it on a creeper or you play all day to build something better. You know you're probably not going to be able to finish in time, but you still do your best. This is when healthy competition comes into place. You want to have some competition to push you to continuously improve. Be that an in real life friend, an online one, or joining a community where everyone shares the goals and accomplishments. Now back to Yu Kao Cho's book, where he said, people want to be part of something bigger than themselves. And to apply that, we gotta get back to why you wanna learn coding. You'll wanna have a big project you're gonna be working on. That's gonna be like the final boss of your coding journey, the Bowser of your Python journey. Be that making a video game or making a website that helps a group of people. Making that project all by yourself can be really motivating too. As the author said, people value things more when they feel a sense of ownership. 
Having a sense of ownership to your project and not having it 50-50 with your friend can be really motivating as it's you and you alone who made it. You can definitely ask for help and have people tell you advice. There's no problem with that, but make sure to have a personal project you'll be working on during your learning. Now, before you just go back and make a list of tasks for your next project, I'll show you how you can make a portfolio website which will actually showcase those projects in a convincing and professional way and help you land a job in tech. Go watch that next.